three, two, one, boom. And we are back to another episode of Socratic Gamers. I know what you're thinking. Actually, no, no. First, uh, this episode is sponsored by Zen Real Clothing Co. Pick up your tees and or... Uh, no, no, no. Sorry. Just check out the free uh, Zen Real Radio, zenrealclothingco.com. Okay, back to it. So you're probably wondering why it's been two weeks since we've put out a podcast. And it's not because of uh, remoteness, because we have this thing. Uh, Vish was actually sick. So... So Vish, it wasn't the COVID, yeah. right? Uh, well, I'm recovered, so I guess not. Okay, but nobody else in your house got sick or anything. No, nobody else got sick. Oh, okay. So likely not the COVID, unless it is the COVID and they're just I'm, asymptomatic. I'm... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Have Have you? Uh, yeah. Is Is anybody at work like, sick? Like, did, what? Because of Because of the whole thing, like. Actually, no, no. More curious about this one. Are you allowed to go back to work once you're over the COVID? Uh, yes, as long as it shows negative, I think. Okay, so it's like it's like you, you're positive, you get over it, you get tested again, and then if you're negative, you can go back to work. Essentially, like yeah. how like how did you call in sick for your work? Were they like, oh shit, is it the COVID? You know what I mean? Or were you just like, oh, I just don't feel well? Yeah, I just um, don't feel well. Oh, okay. So, okay, cool. So you were just like, don't worry, guys. But, like, do, do you have to, like, they, let they, people know that? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, your manager knows that, right? You're sick. But it, it's like um, companies, um, the rules are like, if you're sick, just stay home. So. Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. Nice. I was watching uh, Lex Friedman, the beginning of his of the podcast you know lex friedman joe rogan he always wears like the the tuxedo not tuxedo like the black suit with the black tie no i don't i don't remember he he does like ai he talked about elon musk oh yeah, yeah. they're the russian okay. right all right so what yeah. he was saying and this is pretty fascinating it made me think about it too i was like oh maybe i should start doing that so um he was saying that when this whole covid thing happened everyone just stopped what they were researching and they started researching covid you know, like he's an, he's an AI. He has nothing to do with like viruses, but he's like, let me just see if I can lend a perspective here. So they've all been like reading um, different articles and stuff. And he was saying that what they found is that if everyone wears a mask, then it reduces the transmission rate to one or below one. Yeah. Right. Because it's like you're covering yourself and like, like it's like we're all covered. So there's no way the potential for it to spread is very, very little. But he's saying the social stigma in like North America is that if you're wearing a mask, it's very awkward. You know, it's like, it's almost insulting. Like you can, you can like, like we're just a very social, like we, we use faces to communicate, right? But if everyone's wearing a mask, it becomes like weirder. So he's saying like the reason why we haven't adopted this is because of social stigma. And he was saying that if like our leaders started wearing masks as like a, a show of whatever, you know, then, mm -hmm. um, it would, um, it would, it would create more solidarity and people would start wearing it, you know? Yeah. And he, right. was, he was also saying that it's not about the quality of the mask, just anything that covers your, like, obviously there's like the industrial ones that keep getting sold out. He's like, don't, don't use those. Just use a homemade mask. Right. So he was on there and like, he was talking about like, the homemade mask that he's been making. And I've noticed, like, I, I might even, per if if we all start wearing masks, he's like, it might just become like a social thing until a vaccine, uh, like the fastest way to open the economy is if, to reduce the number, right? So if we all start wearing masks, we're going to reduce the number, we can open the economy. And then once the vaccine's made, then we can start taking masks off, you know? Right. Right. But so people uh, yeah. need to use the mask though. They what, what? People need to know how to use the mask. No, totally. Yeah, yeah. But what do, you, what do you mean though? to use the mask just like put it on oh yeah 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 but like if you get it you're getting it on the front of the mask right so you can't oh touch, touch the, mask. the mask Ooh, true okay so they have to put it, some psa's out exactly there's you need to also teach them how to use the mask okay true true that's a part of the process but so what what i've noticed and i was like ooh, if i'm gonna buy a mask i'm probably gonna buy this mask so um jason momoa he started making um you know he has like he has like rock climbing gear that he makes you know Aquaman? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so he does like uh, rock climbing gear. So he started making masks that you can purchase. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. So like, it's like a dual sided. So like on the inside, it's pink on the outside, it's black or vice versa, like whichever way you decide to wear it. So it's like, it's right. men and women. So like, it's, you know, I thought that was yeah. kind of cool. I was like, oh, I would buy that. Cause like the black version makes you look like a freaking ninja bro. Cause it's got like, you know, his like stripes on his arm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It has that on the mask. So it's like, it's very like Polynesian. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Would you wear a mask? Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Is it like a social stigma thing or just like anti-conformist? Uh, if everyone else is wearing a mask, I don't need to wear a mask. True. I see that point. I see that point. That, um, that's how I look at it. And then what if everyone thinks that same way and nobody's wearing a mask? Well, I mean, everyone should get the virus so we don't have to. What? You know, and just... <laughs> so, you, so you become a herd, uh, what do you call that? Herd, herd, um, dang, what's that thing called? Herd immune? Herd immunity? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. you become herd immune. Maybe, yeah. But any virus though, right? We do that with the flu anyways. Yeah, true. I mean, I think. And the, the only mm -hmm. issue is we don't know the actual number. of. I, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. So if it's actually low and if it's like what Iceland says, 50% asymptomatic, then it's like, well, we it blew be, this out of proportion. It might be less than 1%. Yeah. Yeah. True. True. Yeah. We just don't know at this point. There's no studies. That well, are, there's still, like, no, no, but I mean, like yeah. there's no studies that are conclusive enough where it's like, yeah, okay, no. this is what it is. Yeah. They're still studying it. So. Do you think it's weird that like we blew, this is not even what the topic's about, but <laughs> do, do you think it's weird that they like kind of brought it to this level? You know what I mean? No, I don't think so because. Okay, wait, hold on. So, so this is what I was thinking. So like people are like, oh, it's unprecedented, right? That we've, we've done this, but I'm like, we're only doing this now because we can survive as an economy through digital means, right? Think about when SARS happened. We didn't do this. Yeah. It was still bad, like, but people were like, we're not going to shut down the entire economy because they no, couldn't, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So it's like we're looking at this like, oh, it's unprecedented. It's like, no, it's just we, we have the ability to shut down the economy. If we couldn't shut down the economy, I really don't think we would have locked down. You know what I mean? If internet connection wasn't a thing, we would – I highly doubt we'd lock down. Um, what do you think? I don't know. Well, I, I think about like the, the Spanish flu okay. and when that spread happened, it, there's like it, information like we have now wasn't there in order to stop the economy, but they did have to stop it for one. It became too big. Oh, really? They did? It, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. They stopped the, um, the economy. But the thing is in that time, it's, um, it's like, it's the high spike, right? When they stopped and, it? Yeah, so like when they were going through it, they had to like shut down like restaurants. Everything had to be shut down. Oh, no But, but because it's like we right now we can control like how many people get it and like we're doing the social distancing, like that didn't happen right away. So most people already got it and oh, a lot of people died, okay. right? So then that means that more people recover, recover quicker. Right. So the, the so basically what we do now what we're doing now is um, it is prolonging it for people to get it right mm -hmm. if we let it loose it'll be very quickly and maybe within a couple of weeks can come back to normal because then everyone's already recovered. Wait, say, say it again. You cut out a little bit there. It if you if it was released like without we didn't do any spike of uh debts but also we would recover quicker uh -huh. the economy would quickly because it would be within only two or three weeks by doing what, what we're doing now is extending it okay because slowing the spread you're slowing the spread so that means there's your the time of it to recover is a longer time R oh i see what you're saying yeah, 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 yeah. because it's still we're, we're not like acutely trying to shut it down we're we're trying to gradually shut it down. Is that what you're saying? 
or the virus. We're trying to shut down the virus gradually, but it affects the economy longer. Right, 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 right. Okay. We're doing like a softer approach as opposed to a harder approach. Is there a possible way you can like use headphones or something? You're like cutting in and out or maybe it's the connection. The connection. I don't know. Uh, I'm not using headphones, but. Okay. Hold on. Um, As we attempt. Oh, it's probably me. Okay. Hold on. Oh. Hold on. If you're listening to this on YouTube, I'm attempting to switch over internet connections. Excellent. We are going to call back. This is one of the problems with doing things remotely. We're calling now. Okay. Let's see if he picks up. Vish. Give him a second. This is actually not what the... uh, the podcast was going to be about oh Vish, <laughs> you're back yeah all right cool 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 i was doing a little like talking as i um troubleshooted that i didn't realize i was on the weaker connection because i was like oh how come you're cutting out this doesn't usually happen i wasn't on the 5g what do you think about 5g you think it's actually uh creating the covid no i know I'm, I'm totally kidding <laughs> did you see that thing uh i don't know if i sent it to you but like um they burnt down yeah, the 5g yeah. towers wow bro okay wait no no, no. Let, let's actually get to this um so i've been here like i always hear like oh it's um it's re- actually no i don't want to get into that no we won't get into that on the podcast we'll take that offline okay let's get on to our actual topic westworld um, yes did you did you watch the determinism? Well, I mean, you and I are pretty deterministic, right? Are you a determinist or like a free will person? No, um, I don't believe in free will. Yeah, okay, cool. I don't believe in free will either. And that video, if you're listening to this, you should definitely check it out. It's like a crash course. They they dissect free will and determinism. Uh, I create a short link for it. So bit.ly slash free will versus VS, not spelt out. Um, so sorry, sorry, determinism versus free will. Try that. And the versus is VS. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that should be the link. Yeah. But anyways, okay. so I, I created that short link so that people can watch it easier uh, instead of having to find it on YouTube because I think that sums up the whole idea of free will and determinism so well. So basically the premise is like free will thinkers, they think that everything is spontaneous and it's created out of their own free will, hence free will, right? But what determinists say is that if you can trace back the origin of why you did something, then even if you don't even remember why you did something, like, like if there's, if there's like an, if there's something, if there's a variable there that affects your decision, then it's deterministic because there's a cause and effect and determinism is basically cause and effect. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, and he was saying, like, the only argument that free will thinkers have is that it feels free. So because it feels free, it must be free. And that's, like, that's the lamest argument, you know? He's like, that's you can't found science on any of that. Like, oh, it feels like the air is, it feels like there's no gravity. You know what I mean? But it's like, right. yeah, because you don't yeah. feel it. Or it feels like the earth's not spinning. It feels like the earth's yeah. flat, you know? So it's like, if you're going to think like that, then, yeah, free will is real and so is flat earth and so is you know um, right. a globe that's not spinning you know mm-hmm. so like it's kind of hard to argue for free will if you believe in science you know yeah so yeah. okay so that's so that is tied into Westworld because well that's like a later thing so like season one essentially uh, and jump in here if like I'm saying it wrong, but season one is essentially you think that the primary purpose is for the hosts, um, aka the AI, to become free, right? Mm-hmm. Would right. You, okay. And then season two is that you find out that um, damn, what was season two? It was like uh, it's not. Oh no, no. Season two is you find out that they're trying to make replicas of the humans that visited the park so that they can live forever. So it's not about actually trying to create free will for these hosts. It's about to to create um, fidelity, is what they said, where it's like you you can make it you can make the replica of the the guests that went to the park identical. 
right, mm-hmm. in all their choices. So basically what they did is, like, the guests would visit the park. This was in season one. And they could do whatever they wanted, right? And then what they were told is that they weren't recording anything. But behind the scenes, the company was actually recording everything. Right. And then they were trying to use all of these, like, variable points to recreate the exact replica of that person mm-hmm. so that they could live forever. Right. Right? Right. So that's season two. And we're on season three now of Westworld. And I watch this thing on YouTube, and and you tell me, um, because you're, like, later in the series. But what he's saying is that season one, you're in a simulation. Season two, you're in, like, the you're, you're like, trying to break free will. And season three is you realize that you're you're within a simulation. So you're in a simulation within a simulation. So, like, Westworld is a simulated world. And then when you leave that, you're still in a simulated world. And what he's saying is that all the humans have died and everyone is a host. But to what level of host? It's like AI creating AI. Yeah. Uh, you, how far did you get into season three? Uh, episode two, I think. We just finished episode two. Uh, and then she explained it to... I don't know if that was in episode two. but Okay. Did that make yeah. sense? That makes sense to you? Yes. Oh, interesting. So, um, yeah, in season three, it's still people. I don't know what happened in episode two, so I don't know if I want to say too much. But uh... but does that sound like along the lines of like he he was correct because he did this prediction like when I watched it because um, they they talk a lot about like this is why I love the show they talk a lot about free will. Mm-hmm. And, like, what it means to be human and what is alive, you know? Right. And, like, so I was, like, the reason why I stumbled upon that Crash Course video is I was looking for a scene that I wanted to put online because I was, like, oh, my God, this is so genius. The way they explained um, algorithms, right? They were saying, like, like within – so in season two, you find out that everybody's, everybody's like, stored um, information is fits in a book, Right. Mm-hmm. And that book is an algorithm, which is identifying all of their choices. So if you can if you can figure out the algorithm, you figure out free will. You not free will. You figured out determinism. Like if there's an algorithm, it means that it's deterministic because there's a there's like a mathematical equation, right? Right. And like I've I've been thinking about that for a long time. That I'm like because it, it was back in high school when I was taking uh, probability statistics and it's like you can always predict up to 99.99 ad infinitum um, percent for why something happened, right? But you'll never get 100%. And I was like, well, why can't you get 100%? And they're like, well, because of random. And I'm like, well, if you just figure out random, then it will be 100% every time. And then little did I know that that's just determinism. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like every every philosopher that thinks about it long enough will eventually – achieve the conclusion of its determinism right uh yeah yeah because that's what he says too it's like because they're like oh so free will thinkers will be like oh i came up with that out of nowhere but it's like it's like you know the rationale behind it if you can figure out the rationale you've you've proven free will i mean you've proven determinism Yes. Right. So um, that's essentially what the series is about. Even though, and I know you told me about this before. You're like, oh, sci-fi movies or like shows are all about like talking about the societal condition without actually showing you society. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Remember that you were like Battlestar is really good. And, uh, and I'm like, oh, wow, this is actually talking about like life. And you're like, yeah, but that's what sci-fi is about, you know? Yeah. Because you have to like it- – science fiction world everything seems unreal or whatever but there's one thing that they need to focus on that's real for us to connect with and that is the human side of it right 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 right. totally totally so all right um so all right well what are your impressions of westworld like what do you like about it what don't you like about it no i i really like it um do you think it's better than game of thrones uh, I mean, it hasn't ended yet. So true. Which, yeah, which, true, true, true. You're end. right. You're right. <laughs> but they, but it is really well done. Um, I think the thing uh, is the release time. So you're catching up now, right? Yeah. Um, if you didn't know, uh, almost each season in between was a year gap. 
Whoa. Okay. Dang. That's so intense. the show started in 2016. Okay. And we're only three seasons in now. Wow. We would have been already five seasons, right? But they're having each um, a gap within each se- uh, a year gap within each season. So well, why do they do that? Just like because. I think- Probably for story, probably for um, creating the um, sets and things like that. I, I, I think it's about like really figuring out the story properly. Right, and right, then, right, right. I, mean, Actually, I, I, think that's I like that. I like that a lot better because at least in that way, then you're you're putting like quality over quantity. You know what I mean? Whereas like Game of Thrones, it felt like it was amazing, but then that last season was so terrible. It's like you really should have just fleshed it out better. You know. Yes. So, uh, did you? Hmm. Did that happen yet in this season? Um, they watch Game of Thrones. Uh, no. Uh, uh, episode two. See, I, because I'm much further in, I don't want to say too much. Right, 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 right. right. Yeah. Um, it's it's. I want to see your your uh, thoughts on this season though, but, um, it, like as it goes through, right? Totally, totally. That's why it's like it's it's too bad that you're in like your parents' place because like I know you would have loved to have watched our reactions to this because oh man, dude, we were yes. so mind blown. Like the thing is- so many times I was like, what are we doing right now, bro? Right, right. You know what I mean? Like like especially the way all right, to- this is gonna be a spoiler. I'm gonna put spoilers on this one. So especially in season one when you found out that William was the man in black, you're like, dude had no idea and the whole thing it makes it makes you want to rewatch it like i was like i'll rewatch it again but tara's like it's like let's at least wait five years and i'm like no what but then you're like <laughs> but then you can't remember it right but like it's cool if you rewatch it from the beginning because then you would see like oh they planted everything you know what i mean right yeah. perspective- that's, that's why i would have loved to watch it when you guys watch it because i know it, and i watched it back in 2016 right yeah exactly and to see Literally. it now to see it yeah. now with like Oh, knowing that William is the man in black, you have a total perspective change from him, starting right. from the beginning. You know, and, and he's it, been that, yeah, he's been in that world for so many years. Right, and that's a mind blow. Yeah, that's so good, so good. I felt like the twist in um, season, like I get it, I get what they're doing progressively. Like as as the show goes on, I get why they're writing it in this way. But like mm-hmm. in terms of the plot twist i think season one beat out season two you know season two was good but for for a different reason you know it wasn't a Mm. wow it was more like oh that's what's going on you know right right yeah yeah i i think it's it's also like a slow grind the show i I, like yeah in the beginning it's always like it's building up to something right 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 oh that's true actually Yeah, yeah yeah Every every season did that, right? Like season one, season two, it started out with the end, which be- yeah. uh, the beginning was the ending. I thought mm-hmm. that was kind of cool. I love it when they do that. I totally knew that the security guard must have been a host. Uh, there was something about him. I was like, no, you're you're like host material, bro. Right. <laughs> you, you know, like, and then like when it came out, it didn't even come out at the end of season two. It was in season three. And then you're like, oh, he's a host. It's like it's a confirmed, you know. People right. have their yeah, suspicions, yeah. but now it's like, oh, he is a host, you know. Right. Um, who's your? He was pro- what for that guy? Yeah, that yeah, guy. totally. Yeah, yeah. And I love that scene where, like, what happened in season two when, like, he changes his his like core core narrative, and uh, he's <laughs> like, he's like, if you wanted my help, you could have just asked for it. You know. Right. I thought that was kind of cool, but so who's your favorite character? Uh, that's hard to say. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I like, I would say Ford. He's the genius behind all of it, but maybe he's not, you know? No, I, I mean, yeah, it's difficult to say because there's, there's so many characters to like, though, right? Um, you th- I mean, there's groats on different, different people, right? I don't like Maeve. Do you like Maeve? Maeve is uh, the, the, uh, the she's like Ford two point oh. Maeve the one with the 
daughter? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, no, yeah, I don't, not as much. Yeah, I know, right? Like, yeah, there's something about it. It's just like, it's just kind of lame. I just don't like the storyline of like she's trying to seek for her daughter. It's like, I get it, but. But it's it, but that's the thing though. It's so ingrained in her coding. Right. right totally. Totally. So, you know. You, you know what this reminds me of? This show reminds me of The Matrix. Mm-hmm. You know, because it's like at the end of The Matrix, the third movie, they're like, "Oh, this is the the X inter inter iteration of the Matrix." Right. Remember, right, you, right. You're just another Neo. Yeah. And like in this show, Dorothy is just like. No, no, Bernard, when they're like, oh, you're just like the X iteration of Bernard. Or like mm-hmm. Dorothy's the X iteration. And it's like, oh, we've been here before. So that's why I kind of think that it we're, it's a simulation within a simulation. Right. You know? Yeah. And then I was watching, uh, I don't know if you saw the, um, the Comic-Con interview. Oh, I'm so sad we can't go to uh, Toronto Comic-Con or whatever it was called this year. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Everything is. Everything oh, shut yeah. down. But um, <laughs> so uh, at Westworld, um, the the panel, he was saying – it was Christopher Nolan's brother, right? You said that? Yeah. So Christopher Nolan's brother is the director or producer of this? Both. 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 Okay, cool. Right. So like he was – well, well, Jonathan, Jonathan Nolan is his name, but yeah. So he was saying that we're already in a simulation. He's like, he was at that, you should check out that YouTube, but like he was basically telling everyone that like, we're already in the simulation. Yeah. You know? And it was like, and then that's where the the video guy, the person who was talking about his prediction was going to say that like, like season three, you're going to find out that we're in a simulation within a simulation. And Maeve is trying to find the real world, right? She keeps wanting to like find reality. Yeah. Right. But it's like, but you might find out that you're in an infinite iteration of AI creating AI. Like that's what we're doing now with our own lives. Right. We're like, like we're trying to create AI. And then once we've created AI, AI will create AI. Yeah. And that is the idea of the, uh, the world that we're in, in, in this is a simulation. Is that why you believe in the simulation thing? Like super yeah. heavy? Interesting. I could see that. I could see that. Because it would make sense. It just makes sense in that way, but, you know. All right, so let, let, let's talk about real. So, like, remember she was saying, like, um, she's like, I want to find the real world. And he's like, well, what is real? And then she was saying something that can't be replaced. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, who was? Uh, Maeve. In, Maeve. In, okay. okay. So what she wants to do, her attempt, why she wants to keep... So, okay, let's talk about the... All right, so Maeve wants to find the real world. Dolores wants to burn everything down. Right. And um, I guess Bernard's trying to, like, keep everything good. Like, he wants We're to keep saying, everything... They're normal. Like, yeah, they're normal. They're normal, yeah. Yeah. So that that's really what the three main pursuits are in the show you're looking for reality you're looking to burn everything down and you're looking to keep the status quo right right so Maeve I feel she's like her her pursuit of real is an illusion because if it's only something that can't be replaced then you'll never know if it's real until it's gone but right. at that point, you'll have lost all appreciation for the real. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because once you find out that that thing will never come back, then you've lost your time with it. Because she's constantly searching for it. She hasn't, um, she hasn't learned to appreciate all of the realities. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, so like, like her kid, let's say, and then like her kid dies and then her kid never comes back. And she's like, oh, this was real because my kid never came back. But then at the same time, it's like, yeah, but you could have spent that time having fun with your kid as opposed to searching for your kid's ultimate demise. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Um, So I think that's like... It's almost like she's like an, an enlightened pursuit, you know? She's trying to like, she's like Buddha, you know, trying to find like, like trying to quell her suffering. 
I was just thinking, like, when you said those three, is it like the three, the destroyer, the preserver? Oh, snap. I didn't think about that. You're right. <laughs> it, it's like it's like Shiva, Vishnu, and uh, um, Ganesh? Brahma? Brahma. Yeah, yeah, Brahma, Brahma. Yeah, yeah. Brahma's the creator, though, but right. uh, it's the one looking... I don't know. Uh, somehow, it, it, sem- it seemed to connect to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah triads. Yeah, yeah, everything's always in threes, eh? Yeah. yeah. Weird. But yeah, so okay, so Dolores, she wants to burn everything down because she th- thinks it's like an abomination. Mm-hmm. Right? She's like, why is there this enslavement? Like, you made us. She's like, she's like the angel that's revolting. She's like Lucifer. Yeah. Right? And um, I'd say like Bernard is like Michael the Archangel. He's trying to stop Lucifer from continuing his plot. In order yeah. to, you know what I mean? But, all right, so this is fascinating now that we've we've ventured into this zone. So um, Joseph Campbell talks about, like, archetypes, right? So, like, everybody is trying to fulfill some sort of archetype. That's why stories work for us, right? So mm-hmm. in making this, this breakdown of, like, these three characters are relatable to the three gods, are relatable to, like, Jesus, right? Because of, like, Lucifer and the devil. And it's like, right. we're always... I think the reason why the show's so good is because it's touching upon archetypes and narratives we're already accustomed to. Right. You know. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's fascinating. Who who but do we you, always, uh-huh. uh, tend to build on those the core, right? Right. Totally. Totally. Yeah. 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 And then so you build the it? fluff around it. Yeah. 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 For sure. Yeah. Who who do you um who do you agree with on that one? <laughs> uh. Hmm. I think I like the destroyer. I knew you were gonna say the destroyer. I knew it. That's so funny. I was gonna say Bernard. <laughs> like Maeve, like you're just confused, Maeve. Like we don't need to go down that rabbit hole. So like, right, yeah. right. It's like you're just searching for something that's right in front. Like essentially, Maeve's pursuit is the exact same pursuit of every spiritual person. They go on this whole like roundabout way to realize that all they were looking for was what they were, what was in front of them the entire time. Right. Mm -hmm. Like Maeve is looking for truth or reality only to realize probably later on that the reality she was seeking is right in front of her. Right. So it's like a silly pursuit. So we won't go with Maeve. We'll go with the destroyer or the preserver. Mm -hmm. And uh, you like the destroyer, obviously, because you like, you know, Joker and stuff. I think, (laughs) right. I think, I, I don't know. Chaos. I, chaos, yeah, yeah. yeah. It were true, true, true. Like uh, Dolores is chaos and Bernard is order, right? Yeah. So um, I would say that I like Bernard because I feel like it at least creates a playground for consciousness or like the living experience to enjoy itself. Mm. Because like but if, she, she uh, keeps yeah. him alive though. She um, keeps him alive. Yeah, yeah, she does. Remember, remember. Oh, even in the beginning, remember, she's like, she's like, I need you. Yeah. And then he's like, but we're not friends. I need you, but we're not friends. <laughs> right. So it's like it's like the duality. It's yin and yang. You know. Yeah. So she's trying to destroy it. He's trying to preserve it. You always need that back and forth balance. You know. But I feel like if she destroyed it, it's like then the world would just reset, and then it would be like okay. We're going to create plants all over this place again. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Do you think everyone's dead in the world? In the real world? Or, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. In, in like, the farthest simulation. Uh, that's a good question. I, think, I don't know. I think so. It, it would be a really big twist if everyone's dead. And it's like, yeah, this was I'm our wondering. last thing. It's sort of like, mm-hmm. it's sort of like what we would do, right? We'd create, it, it's sort of like, okay, so like, let's say we shot out AI into space to like find a life form. And then one day, this is like totally a movie, but like one day an alien life form finds that thing, that thing that we shot out in space and like, okay, let's go find the original version of this thing. And they go on this whole mm-hmm. pursuit and they come back to earth only to realize that everyone's dead. Right. Like we didn't make it off the planet. Mm-hmm. That that could be what's going on in uh in Westworld. 
Right. And we're we're living that out, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What are you gonna say? You got you gotta continue watching it and. Uh... Oh, because they are dead. Uh, no, I'm not saying anything. But um... <laughs> <laughs> I love how you never give spoilers. You know. <laughs> I know uh, it's so hard though. There's... No, but you're really good at that. You every time like I we have a guess, you're always like maybe, or maybe not. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my god, like how am I supposed to read that, bro? <laughs> right, right. Yeah, but so I like. Yeah, I was I was reading like uh, how like their inspiration came from like GTA and Red Dead. No, oh really? Yeah. Okay, so okay, so let's go back to this one. So amazing that gta and red dead came from this and of course it would when i first watched the show and like in the beginning i was like oh i get it this show is gta 5 um this show is red dead redemption it's like well, yeah, a red, living red dead redemption red, they so they 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 talk about it in the interview i believe on polygon or something uh it's uh it, like people would go into the world where yeah. you have no rules you just shoot around or whatever else in but your real personalities are not like that in the real world so right. it's like that so it's basically bringing that into the west world that they did in the world of that looks like a red dead and you put people in and what would people do right 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 and That's then around so that then they would build upon and they build upon the story for the npcs and things like that so right and, and they learned a lot like from missions like oh setting up a story or like you know what i mean like you saw that in the first season totally so it's it's exactly like, if anyone asks me what Westworld is and they're, like, a gamer, it's, like, it's Red Dead Redemption for real life. Yeah. Right. You know? Like, you're yeah. instead instead of, like, haptic suits, you're, like, physically going in. Yeah. So, okay, so this brings out two full things. So, first thing is, are the choices they make in that fake world real choices? Like, obviously, uh, no, no, hold on, sorry, sorry, let me rephrase. Because they are obviously real choices. Is that yeah. the real character? Is that who they really are as people? Uh, Yes. Really? You think so? Yeah. I don't think so. I don't think so. Maybe, okay, I guess if they're going into it knowing it's a fake world. That's what I'm saying. I think because they know right. it's a fake world, it's it's like video games, right? It's like, how come no, the no, real... No, no. I- I, right I, I think it's a mix of both. I think it's no, no, no. I think it is them, but it's because they want to try those things, right? It, it, he, um, the old man that became the old man. I forgot his name. William. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So he wasn't like that in the beginning. Right. He became that eventually because of situations, right? But then you find out that it's really him the whole time. Yeah. I, exactly. Yeah. But okay. I, that hit for him. I think that's that's really him. But then, it's but then remember. Wanted... But remember when like the consequences became real and you could actually die in the in the game. Yes. Then yeah. he started to like not be so cruel. Right. Right. So that's what I mean. It's like it's showing you that like there's a if you know it's fake, you can do whatever you want, right? But if you yeah. know it's if you know that consequences matter, you're gonna change. Mm-hmm. Right. So yeah. um, to me, I'm like, is it really them? I don't I don't think it's a part of them within that certain scenario. But like, I don't know if it's really them, them. You know? No, of course, it's 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 a part of them. Right. But it's right. not the whole. Them. Right. right. Totally. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Right. Totally. That's totally. What but then I think it's like flawed when how they're like, oh, we're going to recreate you exactly how you were. I'm like, yeah, you're recreating the person in the park, but you're not recreating like the person, you know? No, yeah. Yeah. Um, so then the second part is what is considered live? And that's really what this topic, this like SG podcast was going to be about. It's like what what do we consider alive? You know? Right. Because like if these people could come back. Like, all right, no, no. So our – because I always thought this too personally when I was playing video games, especially like Fable in the beginning. You, you, like I even talked about my life a video game, remember? And it was like – yeah. It's it was based off of me being outside of Pizza Pizza, and I mm-hmm. was like, oh, because I was just playing Fable, and I was like, oh my god, what we're doing is exactly Fable. We are in our own video game, you know? Yeah. So like, so like, it made me think like, are the characters in Fable alive? You know? 
yes. I would say so too, right? They're alive because like, what does it mean to be alive? It's like you have your own core narrative, like they said in Westworld. And it's like you're trying to exact that core narrative. We all have a core narrative, Mm -hmm. right? Whether they're conscious or not, I think that everything to a degree is conscious because like what is consciousness? It's like electrical signals in my brain created by my brain. So it's, it's a way for me to interpret my own reality. Right. You know what I mean? Like what I see is like I consider consciousness like a mirror, right? It's like you're seeing the outside world. In order to like – in order to experience the outside world, you need a mirror. Right? You need to be able to reflect on what you've just seen. Yes. Right? Because if you can't reflect on it, then you're not like – you're just going through the motions. You're a robot. Right? Yeah. And that's what yeah. – that's what – well, what were you saying? You're basing it on instinct, I guess. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You're like an animal, yeah. right? Or like, I guess animals are conscious as well. But like what – you need something to let you know that you're having an experience. And that is what consciousness is. It's the, it's the active awareness of your experience. Right. Right? So like I think NPCs are conscious because if you look at it, if I do something to that NPC, he will react in a certain way. He needs mm-hmm. he needs to tell his brain that something has happened and he needs to react to it. He right. has a mirror. Yeah. Right? Makes sense? Or he's programmed, right? But, 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 we're, but what I'm but saying is like... A, uh, yeah. like again, again, if you're in a simulation, we're also all programmed. It's totally, exactly. We'd all be programmed. And I think that... We are, I think consciousness at that level of being Mm -hmm. able to reflect, that's why I think everything is conscious because everything has an ability to reflect on a thing. You know, it has like, it has the potential to react when a, when a cause occurs, when an action occurs, it will react. So action, reaction. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? So like, yeah. This happened to me, I will do this, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think a rock even has that, right? If you, if you put fire near a rock, it's like, okay, there's fire. I need to react by my molecules moving. You know, it, right. it's not even like consciously reacting to it. Well, it is consciously reacting to it because it, it's, it's reflecting upon that thing. That, do you get what I'm saying? Like, I think in order, I get, I get in, it's saying. so like meta and it's hard to like put out there, but like, in order for something to react to something, it has to have a conscious connection to what's going on. It has to be alive. It has to be alive. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's what they mean, like the spiritual people, when they say like even the rocks are alive. Because being in this reality, if you can be affected by this reality, you have to be alive. Because everything in this reality is alive. Right. But but yeah. it's only according to the definition of what does it mean to be alive. And to be alive means you can engage in this dance of action and reaction. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yes. And and that's why I totally think that, you know, NPCs are alive. Just like like all video game characters are alive. Everything mm-hmm. in this like world is alive. So I guess from that perspective, we are in a simulation because that's how a simulation would be run. Yes. Yeah. Right. Coded to react within a given scenario. Action, reaction. Yeah. Yeah. Ones and zeros. And that totally makes sense, actually, if you think about it, because it's like if – because like – all right, so if you look at – Programming at its basis level, basic level, right? Yeah. Um, programming is if then statements, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, I, I did like basic programming, and what it is is like you're like if this, then this, right? Yeah. And then you have if this, then this, and then you have call functions. And call functions are basically a group, like, think of a call function like a folder of if then statements. Right, right, because yeah. you, you can't have like billions of lines of you can have billions of lines of code, but like it's just easier if you group all of those call functions together. I mean, all of those if then statements together, 
and then that's and then you call upon that later on. So it's like if this call upon this. Do you get know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got what you're saying. So if if all programming is if then statements, action reaction, then at that level we are living in a simulation because our entire life is an if then statement. Yeah. Whoa, mind blow. Right? Because like because like people are like, okay, are we living in this programming simulation? And I'm like, I don't think we live in like a I don't think we live in like some creators out there and he's like writing a narrative for me. So that that's why I didn't believe in simulation theory. Because it's like I don't think that we're in a computer. Mm-hmm. But if you look at it allegorically, then we are in a simulation because all computer code is if then statements. And right. our entire lives are governed by if then statements. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we are in a simulation. Wow, this entire podcast has just turned me around to be like, we are in a simulation, if anyone asks. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, there's other other ways to explain simulation, other people say. Um, okay, do you, do you have a simple one? Like, that's the easiest way for me to grasp No, I think, I think that's, probably for you, that's probably the best thing for you to explain it to you. But for me, it was more like, in our, like technology, the way it's progressing, it has to be where, like, we would end up creating a stimulation for something else, right? Right. I see what you're saying. So, like, you're using the logical flow of where we're going to go as a, a, a growth, society. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But I'm taking it at our basis level of, like, determinism equals simulation. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, it's all – you can all put it together, right? So it's, like, it's all part of that. Whole... Totally, yeah. Because we would have inevitably created – wow, that's so trippy. <laughs> Do you hear about that? That that's theory? Why, that's why Westworld is is a great way to like to see that. Right, 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 right. I would say Westworld is if you're if you're curious if we're in a simulation, watch Westworld. You know, yeah, because it's like it really touches upon so many facets to being alive. Like, what is alive? What is conscious? What is free will? You know. Yeah, but- to get you to watch this show. For I know you have, but it's, you know what it was for me? I don't, I thought it was a Western. I thought you were trying to show <laughs> me like a Western. I was like, no, this looks stupid, bro. Like, I, I didn't know it was about like robots. I thought it was like, I literally thought it was about like the wild, wild west, <laughs> you know? And I was like, I was confused, you know? Uh, yeah. Okay. So I guess I didn't do a good explanation yeah you should have been like yo it's about like robots and simulations but, but like yeah but back but then the uh, yeah. point of what me is was like i'd rather you watch it than see that happen versus me telling you about, i know right? right but totally so because you don't like to give spoilers but for me the way i work is i need to hear the spoiler because if if it doesn't like i don't want to spend like an hour and then it's like oh man that was a waste of my time you know what i mean right. i'd rather know if it was worth it in the end or not that's also right. why I like reviews, right? So at least that way. Yeah. But you don't like to get spoilers. Like you really like to see the organic reaction. Yeah, I, yeah that's, that's for me. Yeah. I really rather not know and jump into it. I'll decide after an hour. If I like right. Totally, totally. Totally. Yeah. You live by experience. I live by um, the experience of others. <laughs> uh, so. Um, yeah. Oh, man. I was get Dang. I lost my train of thought there. I guess that's a bit of chaotic thinking, though, right? Like watching the show, not knowing what it is. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True, and that's why. Whereas I like the order, right? That's why I want to sustain yeah. things. So it's like I need to know. Whereas you're like, yeah. you're like let the chips fall <laughs> so where they good. may. I don't want to waste my time. Yeah, I got that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I. Oh man, I was gonna ask you about free will, determinism. Oh, um. So then, what do you think about like? life then if if it's all deterministic you know it does it just mm-hmm. make you so like the, for me like because some people freak out because they're like okay so no no okay so this is really cool so in that crash course thing the way they opened up the thing about determinism is with the story of oedipus okay so you know yeah. everybody's like oh kill your father marry your mother 
Mm-hmm. And that's what everyone, like Freud's like, oh, you have an Oedip- Oedipus complex. Like you want to marry your mother, you know? Right. And it's like, that's actually not what that story is about. Okay. So mind blow. I love how like people take things and then they like extrapolate them in the wrong direction. Not unlike religion. But anyways, so the crash course opens up with the actual story of Oedipus. So do you know the actual story of Oedipus? Uh, yes, vaguely. Okay, so, well, I'm going to say to whoever's listening. So Oedipus, the prophecy of Oedipus was that he was going to kill his father and Mary's mother. So Oedipus was like, no, so his, his, I think his dad was like, no, I don't want that to happen. So he ran away, right? Mm Mm-hmm. And then, so, or they like left Oedipus somewhere. Yeah. So anyways, right. so Oedipus grows up and then he's like, oh, here's the story. So he's like, I don't want to do this. So he leaves. And then in his leaving, he comes across this person. He ends up killing that person. And then he ends up marrying that person's wife. Right. But he doesn't realize that that's his mom and dad. Right. Right. So that's it, his plan. It was already set. Like. And that's, that's what fate is. So like a lot yeah. of philosophers will use that story as a means to explain free will mm-hmm. or like determinism because like you can't run away from your fate. Right. Right. And from that perspective, then what does it mean about our life? You know, because a lot of people are like, I want, like they, they become like Oedipus. They were like, I want to run away from it, you know, but then other people mm-hmm. are like, it is what it is then. You know? Right. And and personally, because, like, a lot of people freak out when they realize, like, they don't have free will, I like to think of it like we should just enjoy the show, you know? Yeah. And and if you look at so many I, – I know I've said this before, but it's because, like, I didn't have a great way to articulate free will uh, determinism. But, like, if you read a lot of spiritual texts, they all talk about determinism fate leela it's all a play yeah you know life is a show like they keep saying this right and i was like like so in in yoga they're like life is like um watching you're in a movie theater and you're watching your life play out on screen and you have Mm -hmm. to detach from what it is you're seeing and realize that you're in the movie theater right that that's how you get over suffering and like in yoga right they're like you when you realize that you're just watching the play of your life, then you can detach from the misery of that show because you're like, it's just a show, right? Mm-hmm. But what I always said is if it's a movie, movies have a start and end that's defined. So are you saying that our entire life story is written? And people be like, no, no, it's not, you know? But it's like, it actually yeah. sounds like it is. If you're using the analogy of a movie, that's how movies are written. If you're yeah, using the analogy of a play, that's how plays are written, you know? Even even in religion when they say, like, God knows your story. It totally. That means. It's so frustrating when people, and, and they try and do two things, right? They're like, like, it was written, you know? God, yeah. like, God has a plan for you. God's plan, you know? Shout out Drake. Yeah. But then people are like, but I have free will and choice. So then what about God's plan? Exactly. It's it makes no sense to me. So then, when God's like, so then it's almost like is God like sick and sick and vindictive because he's like, he's like, I'm gonna pretend like you have free will, but I'm actually not gonna give you free will because I know mm-hmm. what's gonna happen. So it's like we're like he's just entertaining himself. It's almost like we're on a roller coaster ride and we're strapped in, and all we can do is just wait till the ride is done. And on every roller coaster ride, there's an up and down. You know, yeah. there's thrilling parts. There's like boring parts, you know, mm-hmm. but we're on yeah, the yeah, roller coaster yeah. of life. Right. But there's a, there's a defined start and end and there's a defined path, mm-hmm. you know? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's great. That's a great way to end this bad boy. <laughs> so essentially go watch Westworld. It's important that you do. Because it will show you that life is predetermined and everything's alive and we're living in a simulation. Yeah, and what would you do in a video game? Yeah, totally. Because your life is a video game. My life, a video game. 
go watch Westworld. Yeah. It's super important. And if you don't want to watch Westworld, it's because you are predetermined not to watch Westworld. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> that, that's how he ends it. That's how he ends it. He's like, it's such a good video. If you watch that, like, again, bit.ly slash determinism vs free will. Yeah, you said like, you said like, yeah. Yeah. But like for the yeah, listeners. So like. I think I did watch it at like a long time ago. Yeah, it's an old, it's an old, it's an old like video. Like I just stumbled yeah. upon it because I was watching Westworld. But like the way he ends that was so perfect. He's like, if you don't think that I'm correct, well, you're predetermined not to think I'm correct. And if you don't <laughs> like the fact that this is true, well, you're predetermined not to like the fact that this is right. true. Yeah. That's you know? why. That's why what? Back, uh, like whenever we like when other people believe in God and things again, that's why I can't hate them because they're determined. Like it's like yeah. all of the variables led up to you totally. And that's why I think that, that yeah, yeah, go ahead. No, that's exactly why. Like I couldn't, like, I can't blame them. You mm -hmm. know? And, and I think that's For, why like yeah. acceptance, you know, when they talk about like acceptance is the key, I think mm -hmm. the root of acceptance is realizing that we live in a determined simulation. You know, because if you right. realize this, then nothing can really affect you because it's like it just it happened. Like, obviously, you're, you'll go through the emotions of it. But like yeah. at the end of the day, you have to remember, like, it's all just a show. Like you're going to end the play eventually. You know, right. how, how trippy would it be if we, we died and we woke up and it was like, like, how is that? <laughs> you know, what I mean? wouldn't that be so trippy? Honestly, like I've been thinking about this for a while, like especially with like our friend group. And it's like, how come us and our friends are so tight? But like we like, how does that work? You know what I mean? Like, how do you build friendships and does it last, last across different lifetimes? So it's like, what if when we die, we take off the headset and it's like we're all wearing the same headset? Right. Like we go in like one of those escape rooms. Except it's, like, virtual. And then, like, mm -hmm. you go in and, like, all right, we're going to wipe your memory and all of you guys are going to start at this point and then you're all going to, like, gradually get to this crescendo where you all have to do something together, okay? The alien's going to come. Ready? Go. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. We're like, we're, like, we're like William. When we get old and we die in the game, we open, like, we go out of the game, right? Yeah, to totally, Back totally. To that reality of another game. You know, it reminds me. Of, it reminds me of Call of Duty, where we fly in from the top, and then you have different parties, and then you're starting. You know what I mean? It could it could essentially yeah. be like that. You know, we like mm -hmm. this whole game is designed to like wipe your memory at birth, quote unquote, and and then like you you and your party have to find how to get to where it is you want to go by the end right. like you have a, you have a objective but you know what's funny like i don't know it's like chicken and the egg like did we create video games and stories to be like this or is it because that's what we believed because like i can't remember i think it's like the the jamaicans well what's jared the patois oh uh, yeah i think so so jared told me the story I think it was Jared who told me the story. He's like, when you when you're born before you're born, you remember what it is you're supposed to do, and then when you die, when you're born, your memory gets wiped, and then your objective is to remember what it is you're supposed to do, and then carry that out in this life. Right. But that sounds just like a video game that I'd want to play. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's like, yeah, we could literally be in it. Yeah, we could. Be. But then even if we leave this simulation, we'd still be in a greater simulation, which is what Westworld's trying to show us. Because like even that even that world, if we wake up from this world and we're actually in a video game, it's like well, that world's probably predetermined too, because there's action reaction. Yeah. It's for an infinitum. Yeah, ex exactly. Ad infinitum. So it's like yeah. so maybe wow. That's crazy. And you, you know how, like, you know how, like, in video games, they give you, like, these little, like, hints of where to go? Mm -hmm. That's what your intuition is, you know? And they drop off these, like, little things, these, like, markers, like Westworld, into the video game. And they're like, hey, this is going to show you the truth about what you're supposed to do. Your primary objective in the video game. We're going to drop it off, you know?
You have like yeah. checkpoints. You know what I mean? Like in video games, they have those like points where it's like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. it like pops playing... up and it's like your your new objective is to go to here. You know, like yeah. in Final Fantasy VII, they do that all the time. Yeah, but then you can it takes so it's like that, and then uh, uh, you can go straight to that or get side. Totally, yes. Take it longer to get. <laughs> yes, exactly, ex- e- totally. My life, a video game, bro. I'm telling you, this is the real. This is like the realest thing ever. That's so true. Exactly what you said. It's like it pops up and it's like, here's your primary objective. But there's all of these side quests that you can engage in. And then some people get lost in the side quest. Yeah. You know what I mean? They spend their entire game playing the side quest rather than going Mm -hmm. towards the main objective, which is what they really want to do. Yep. Crazy. My life a video game. (laughs) But, you know, it depends. Do you want 100% completion or... (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, totally, totally, totally. And I'm one of those... But that's so... You know what's so funny, actually, about that analogy, what you just said about 100% completion? I'm playing Final Fantasy VII right now. I could care less about the side quest. I'm like, I don't care. I just want to get the story done, bro. You know what I mean? But then you have, like... I don't know if you're doing this, like, like in in other video games. And, yes, I am doing some side quests. Exactly. Exactly. See what I'm saying? So it's like I could care less about the side quest, and that's probably why I'm so like. I guess no, it's that, true. That like, comes, you know, comes in waves. It comes in waves for me. There's like, okay, I want to do some side quests, but then it's like, okay, let's go back to the story and totally, more. <laughs> totally. And you remember, but but you remember how we were just saying, like, does it show you who you really are? Yeah. yeah Maybe it really yeah. does show you who you really are. Not your not your exact choices, but your intuition. Maybe they're trying to capture intuition. They're not actually trying to capture choices. Mm, you know what I mean because like it's like what kind of person are you you know and then who you are will extrapolate you know we just need the base algorithm of who you are and then your story will flourish you know just like we were saying like you take the archetype and then like you add the fluff around Mm. to make the story right you know because like it's funny what you said because like also at the same time like (laughs) <laughs> like Sydney like loves driving around. Remember like we're like, oh you want to play GT five? Like, yeah, yeah. I haven't I'm just gonna go to the store. I'm just gonna drive to the store. <laughs> I'm gonna buy my right, stuff. Yeah. I'm just gonna live my life. And like he'll follow the speed limits and like <laughs> like what are you doing, bro? You know, he's like, I'm just living in the game, bro. You know? But that's the thing, you know how you said that they were recording in Westworld? Mm-hmm. They're recording us knowing what we like to do in the game. And this is so true. And it's just like ads, man. Yeah. Right? Like you everyone's gotta watch Westworld. Man, Westworld is where it's at. Cause like that is what that's what they do with algorithms for ads. They try and like track how long you're watching something, what is it you clicked on, all that stuff in order to like sell to you. But like on a deeper level, could they recreate who we are as people? If you have enough data, they did that in Black Mirror, right? Remember, he took all of the, um, the wife died, and then he, they took all of like the text messages and all that, and then the robot came. Mm-hmm. That episode, yeah. Yeah, I think if you have all the data, yeah, you can essentially recreate the person. Yep. Yeah. 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 That's so fascinating. And like what what they're saying on the Joe Rogan experience is like because of the thousands of hours that Joe has been on the podcast, you could easily mm-hmm. recreate him. You know, like I think people with podcasts, like wouldn't that be crazy? What? Like, yeah. no, uh, you can. I well, you can recreate the the version of Joe Rogan on the podcast, but you still can't. You don't have everything, right? You know why? why? Fidelity. <laughs> That's that's what they're searching for in um, Westworld fidelity. Yeah. yeah, but no, you're right though. Like that is that is the thing though. Because you really got to get. It's not just like how they're speaking or what they're talking about. It's, it's what's their like thought process. Yeah, yeah. Because things that you think you don't say. No, it, totally, totally, totally. So and that's not really you, right? For sure. No, I agree. I agree. But like, um, but that's what that's why I think like what they're looking for is the base algorithm. And then from there, you can extrapolate it. Because like what they're saying about fidelity, what is fidelity? Fidelity is choice. The word mm-hmm. fidelity is like like choice, right? Right. Actually, let me just hold on. I'm just going to pull this up on my computer now that I have it here. I'm looking it up. 
Fide- all right, so fidelity means loyalty, consistency, devotion, loyalty. Okay, so I guess it's like loyalty to the person. Yeah. I was, I was so wrong on that. <laughs> it's a good thing we pulled that up. Uh, yeah. Faithfulness to a person. Yeah, faith. Okay. Okay, never mind then. Ignore what I was saying. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> But so, yeah, I, but I still think that what they're looking for is the base algorithm of who that person is. And then from there, you're going to extrapolate further because that's, that's, right. that's all it is. Right. And that's what, yeah, that, found it. right. And that's what DNA strands are. You take a DNA strand and then you extrapolate it, you know, mm-hmm. you take a single Maybe cell and you extrapolate it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Right. Yeah. Maybe, maybe who we are is encoded in our DNA. You know, a lot of people uh, that yeah. that's like that's like an esoteric belief that people believe that who we are as people is encoded in our DNA. Okay, but it, but it could be that actually that, could... that makes sense. You know, it's like yeah, because from the DNA you extrapolate, you know. Yeah, and then yeah. the environmental choices, et cetera, et cetera. But that's what they said. Right. Like your environment turns on and off what's in your DNA strand, right? Like if you have a propensity towards cancer, and like your environment triggers that your DNA will kick in that you're going to get cancer. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah. right. Mm-hmm. That, that's the whole thing in psychology where it's like, is it nature or nurture? And it's like, it's both because your it's nature both. is your DNA. And then your environment, your nurture is what's mm-hmm. going to like show you who you become. This is a great episode. Yeah, I really like this one probably because like fucking Westworld's so good. Everyone's got to watch Westworld. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. All right. You keep watching this season three. Yeah. Right? Yeah, maybe we'll do like another Westworld episode when it's like all done. We'll like predict it. Yeah, maybe, maybe when season three is done. Well, yeah, I think when se- yeah, that's what I was about to say that when season three is done, then we can like recap Westworld. So I think this one, this episode, uh, will be called like "We're Living in a Simulation," and then it'll be a picture of Westworld. But then, like, <laughs> then when we actually do the Westworld review, then we'll like do Westworld review. We'll actually just uh, strictly talk about Westworld. But I wanted to talk about like all of these theories via Westworld because it's like been freaking plaguing my mind and you're not here. So it's like, I can't like, just like when the episode's done, like talk to you about like this, craziness, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. All right, cool. Till next time. You got any final thoughts? No. All right. My final thought is go watch Westworld. Go watch it. Pay the, oh. Oh, but yeah, the subscription maybe fee. saying that. So yes. yeah, totally. All right, so until next time, uh, check out zenrealclothingco.com for Zen Real Radio. And when the economy picks up, then support us by donating on Patreon and um, picking up some teas and or accessories on zenrealclothingco.com. Take it easy. Peace.